Alright guys, welcome back to the channel and the build of our teardrop trailer. Today we're going to start running all of our wiring for all of our accessories. We're going to be installing some lights, we have a ceiling fan and some switches that we'll be installing in the trailer. We're just going to keep it simple. Uh, this in no way is how you need to do yours. Your accessories might be different than mine. Uh, your layout for all your wiring might be, be different than mine. So. Just keep that in mind. This is just how I'm going to do mine. So when it comes time for you to wire your trailer and for all the accessories that you might want to install, uh, you might do yours just a little bit different. So with that, let me show you uh, how I plan to wire, uh, run all my wiring, where I'm going to place my lights and uh, switches and things like that. Then I'll show you some of the accessories that I have that we'll be installing. Okay, so at the front of the trailer, we'll have a battery box. I haven't decided which one to use yet. I do have my eye on one, but it is kind of pricey. But I think it'll look nice. From there, I've got a couple of connectors that uh, we'll install on the front of the trailer and on the battery box. They're sort of like a shore power except for 12 volt. From there, we'll be running wiring up the front of the trailer into our electrical panel and for that I'll be using 10 gauge wiring from our uh, when we get the wiring into the electrical panel we're going to go into a positive and negative bus bar and that will uh, supply the power to the rest of the trailer we have some lights that we'll be installing so for that I believe I'll probably use 14 gauge wire and also for the exhaust fan uh, use 14 gauge wire the lights I could probably get away with 16 gauge I won't know which direction I want to go until I get to that point. So, that'll be how we start. Alright, so that's how we're going to get power into the trailer. We're going to go from the battery box to our connector. We're going to run into our electrical box inside and to our bus bars, our positive and negative. And from there, then we can feed out to all of our other accessories. So, let me show you a little schematic that I drew up and some of the things that we're going to be using then we're going to get started so real quick on a piece of wood I kind of sketched out how I'm going to run my wiring from the front of the trailer it's going to come up and then we're just going to go over into our electrical box here which is in about the front center of the trailer uh, then we have a exhaust fan we're just going to run the wiring straight up into that and then we'll have lights We'll have two here in the center of the trailer on the outboard side and then we'll have two in behind and we'll kind of keep those inboard and so we'll have four lights on the inside more than adequate for lighting and then we'll also from our electrical box we'll also run wiring to the back for the rear hatch in which on the hatch we'll also have a couple of lights so I somewhat have everything laid out that I'm going to be using uh, for this project we have all of our wiring. We have our little bus bars here. These are just a single pole. These will fasten down to the inside cabinetry. And so positive and negative for that. We also have our lights. And we have some switches. And then all the connectors and shrink, uh, shrink wrap that we'll be using on there. Let me give you a, a look at the lights that we'll be installing. So on Amazon I purchased a uh, package of six little LED lights. They're two inch LED lights and they're solid uh, aluminum construction. They've got a little uh, ears here on the side so that when you push it up into the ceiling they stay up there and of course the uh, the wiring. So what we have to do is tap holes into the ceiling and we're also going to use a backer block uh, to make sure that these lights stay in there and uh, doesn't won't fall out. Remember the ceiling that I'm using is pretty thin so we need that backer block in there to kind of help support these and keep them in place. So let me show you what uh, what I made. So this is just a test sample for my backer block. I wanted to make sure that I've got the correct size hole uh, in order to install our light. And for that, that actually took a two and three eighths inch hole saw. So I just kind of drilled one in the wood took my wiring, put in place, take my light and snap it in. 
So I think that's going to look pretty nice in there on the ceiling, and that should uh, provide provide enough light. Uh, the light's in there pretty good, so it's not going to bounce out. At least I hope not. So I've cut a couple, and we have a couple more that we uh, need to make. So the size of the round part that I'm going to make is four inches in diameter, and our hole here is about uh, two and three eighths. So I've got the hole saw set up in the drill press. We're going to go ahead and punch holes in these, then we'll cut this out, cut circles out, sand those up, and then we'll have a nice looking ring. So now with all of our little uh, light rings cut, we've got them setting in position where I think I'm going to install them. We'll have two here in the front part and on the outboard side and then two slightly moved in to the inboard side and that'll give us some nice lighting inside. So next step is to apply some glue. We'll get those in, uh, glued down, pressed in place, wait till those cure up really nice and in the meantime, we'll start drilling holes for all of our wiring and uh, get that all run. We're just going to center this here real quick. We're looking at about 7 and 3 sixteenths to the center. And I'm just quickly eyeballing it so... I think that looks good. All right, now with all of our little uh, ceiling light rings in place, we're going to let that glue dry. And while that glue is drying, we'll start tapping holes to start running some wiring. All right, let's punch some holes. All right, so we have some holes punched in all the way to the top, all the way through to the back here. And we also have a couple of holes for exit for our wires for our lights. Now we're going to work on the back section here. So from four inches over from this edge right here, I'm going to go down and punch a hole all the way through the bottom. Put me a grommet here on the bottom. Then we'll go on the back side and punch a hole through then we can feed the wire through and down and all the wiring will hang out here that'll be for our hatch so let's go ahead and get that one drilled we're going to go down all the way through here then on the back side we're going to come in and meet that hole that way we can feed the wire in and push it down i'll show you what that looks like once we're done all right so i used a half inch spade bit to go down bore hole all the way through to the bottom here. Now we're going to go from this side and we're going to punch a hole all the way through. That way we can feed our wire through. Alright, now that we have pretty much all our holes drilled and I've got a nice little grommet here under the uh, bottom section that's going to come out for our lid and also all the holes in the top are done now we're ready to start running some wiring I also have a grommet here that goes inside of our electrical panel so we're gonna run wiring from the front here at the bottom we'll run it up bring it over 
and into our electrical box. But before we do, the first thing I am going to do is install our bus bars. So we'll get those inside. We'll get those installed right in here. Put positive one side, negative on the other. So all of us can't fit in the same hole. So I'll give you a shot of what it looks like when I'm done. All right, so our bus bars are now installed and pretty solid. And uh, to get in there and tighten those down, pre-drilled a couple of holes, put the screws in, fasten those in solid. I used that uh, bendable extension and I used a little drill bit here and also Phillips head. And that thing works like a charm. I can get right in there, bend that thing down on top of it and uh, fasten those screws in. So now we can run our wiring in. We'll get our terminal ends. Uh, on the end of our wire, we'll go ahead and connect those on and put them in position where we need them. Then we get some other wiring run. All right, now we're gonna put our terminal ends here on the ends of our wire. We'll go ahead and connect those up to our bus terminals and uh, we'll get the rest wired up. So, let's see here. Get our wires on. And then we can crimp that down. Then we'll use our uh, handy dandy torch. That Ron Cassidy sent me. We'll get that on there. He sent this to me when I was working on my last project and uh, I've been using it ever since. What a great little tool. Now we're ready to install this on our bus terminals and then we can pull the wire through, get it in place all the way down to the front and uh, we can call this part done. All right, real quick, just to show you where I'm at, is this is where our exit is going to be for our fitting, for our wiring. This is 10 gauge. We're going to go from the battery into here. And as we run up, it goes into the cabin right there. Then I also have a set of wires. This goes all the way back to the hatch. And I haven't determined the length of it yet, just yet, but I'll be cutting that and I'll use uh, some of that for the, the fan. So then on the inside, as I bring the wiring in, I've got my bus bars right there. And positive to positive, negative to negative. And that's just about as simple as I think I can make it. And then our switches would be right here, so we'll just go from positive to positive, negative to negative, and to our supply. On, off, on, off. Poof. All right, so we had a little fun punching some holes in the top, and, uh, and that sure makes quite a bit of dust. But everything is cleaned up. And uh, now we have holes for our lights and our ceiling fan. It's starting to uh, look like a home here. I think that'll look pretty nice once it's lit up. We'll probably have a little USB light over here once it's all said and done, just for a little nap time reading. But, uh, yep, it's coming along. Got a little skylight going. Okay, now that I've got all my wiring run, it's set in place, nothing's like really strapped down. Um, I'll give you a shot of what I've got and we'll talk about 
some of the accessories we're going to be using and eh, things I got to do anyway uh, before we get insulated. So let me give you a shot of my run of my wiring. Um, like I said, this is not the way that you need to do it. Uh, this is the way that I'm doing it, so it's going to work for, for me. So let's take a look at uh, my wiring. So starting here in the front, this part is going to be what exit out the front of the trailer. So I've left uh, an ample amount of wire here, so I'll be able to fish that out through a tiny hole. And then, of course, we run it up and into the cabin itself, into our little makeshift electrical box. We ran wiring all the way back to the hatch area. So this wire here, I left sort of long. That way uh, we'll be able to put a couple of lights into the uh, hatch with a switch. So that's where it exits here and then we'll put a nice little covering over that. And then, let's see if I can't get you shot up here. So I've got my little light rings that I installed and my wiring is just run through on each one and just kind of hanging down right now. So it's starting to look like a little bit of a spider web in here. So we've got our wiring for our exhaust fan that's kind of hanging down extremely long. And uh, the rest of the wiring is hanging down through our lights. So when we get ready to install the lights, we'll shorten those up, put connectors on them, put connectors on our lights, and uh, we'll just fit those into the sockets. Then in our little makeshift electrical box, all my wiring comes in and connects to my uh, little bus bars here. And then I've got these marked as far as the front and rear lights, so we'll be able to hook those to the switches once our panel is made. So let me give you a shot of some of the switches and the panels that I have in mind. So first things first, we need to make a uh, covering for our fuse panel inside. And I've currently got a nice large hunk of mahogany that I will trim down a piece, quarter inch. And uh, we'll size that to fit our opening. And sand that nice and pretty like, round some edges, put some holes in the corner and that's what we'll attach to the face of our uh, fuse panel in there. And we'll also punch some holes, we'll have a couple of switches, uh, we we'll, might have a little reading light and a USB port that you can charge phones on or devices. And for our light switches, these are the switches that I purchased. These illuminate when they are on and they are a touch switch. So uh, there's no buttons to push or anything like that. You just reach up and touch it. As long as your fingers are pretty clean and dry, those should work really well. The instructions are pretty simple. It tells you how to wire everything up. So we should uh, be able to wire those in with no problem. We'll put connectors on the ends here and I went ahead and made me some little pigtails. So for my bus bars inside, I've got a positive and negative. So we'll connect that to the positive. And our ends here will connect to our switches. I have three switches, but uh, we'll use two on the interior and one on the uh, hatch itself. So we have a positive and negative pigtail. And those will come in handy. Once we get the uh, connectors installed on our switch, we just plug those right in and tighten everything down and they should work just fine. That's the idea anyway. Let's uh, hope it works. And of course my plethora of wiring and fittings and you know, it's those little pieces that's going to get you. These are like, I think these are like nine bucks. For each pack, and then the wiring was another 850 or something like that a pack. And then the connectors were like a buck and a half a shot. They give you three. Uh, that's an odd number. All right, so I hope that gets your juices flowing on uh, just how simple a setup it is. 
we're just going from the battery into some bus bars. From the bus bars, we're just going out to our accessories. So nothing special. There's no 20 amp, 15 amp fuses or anything like that. We will have an inline fuse coming from the battery uh, to the connector before we uh, come into the cabin. Uh, so currently, I need to get some more wire ties, button all of my wiring down. We'll probably tape those down to the top so things don't rattle around. Then we'll be able to get the insulation in, and then we can roll on the ceiling. Uh, let me show you the connectors that I'm going to use that I talked about that we're going to come out the front with. Okay, now the connectors that I use, they're 12 volt, and they're made by Perco or sold by Perco, a company by Perco. These are marine grade, so this is what they use in most of the boating industry. So they're they're designed really for the harsh salt water environment. So these are going to be uh, perfect for our little teardrop. So this is what they are. They have a connector here on the front, two holes and a couple of screw holes. So you put your wires in there, clamp it down, and this attaches to the face of a battery box or in our case it'll be battery box and the front of our trailer and so this part is behind the wall that also has a couple of screws that will attach your wiring and then there is a rubber boot here with a hole in it so we'll be able to run our wiring through and it goes over this I'm not going to push it in because uh, it's pretty tight so once the wiring's in I push this over it's going to be there for a little bit and this part unplugs so it has uh, uh, male ends here female ends and there's a small and a large so 12 volt this will be sticking out of the face of the trailer this will be connected to our electrical cord and we'll just plug that into the trailer we can leave it or whenever not in use we can disconnect the power kind of like shore power except for 12 volt and uh, that's going to work really good when this is uh, taken out there's also a little rubber boot that uh, slips over this here and with a little cap on it that you can put on and it seals it up really nice so I think that is going to work for our uh, teardrop <clears throat> so our 12 volt wiring will come out of the front of the trailer we'll plug it in here so we'll have like a 12 volt shore power so I can always change out the batteries uh, you know and things like that without half having to undo a lot of wiring I just unplug and I go it's a plug and play so I think that's pretty cool it's gonna work out great and uh, I'm looking forward to get that installed and see how well that works mm hmm okay I don't think I left anything out and if I did, I'm sure I'm going to cover it when uh, I get ready to install stuff. So this is where we're at right now. Got the wiring all in place. Next thing I need to do, obviously, is uh, button down all my wiring. I need to varnish the uh, ceiling on the inside. So that'll take me a couple days just to, to, well, mask things off and get things varnished up. Make it look pretty nice. And then uh, next time you see the video, we'll be installing the face plate on our fuse box or panel or hole whatever you want to call it and we'll get the switches installed we'll get the lights installed and then we're going to test it out because uh, before I install the ceiling on this let's make sure everything works because once that ceiling's on that's it so wish me luck all right now I'm going to take my block we're getting ready to make our face plate for our electrical box and I've got my saw set up so we'll end up with about a 3 16 plate so I'm gonna run it through the saw we'll raise the blade up increments it'll reach about this height I'll turn it over do the same thing and then I'll probably have to take a saw and uh, just trim a little bit inside sand that and we'll uh, cut it to our shape and get it installed so I spent a little time on the table saw and uh, run that block of wood through there several times and it wouldn't go all the way through so I had to take a uh, hand saw and eventually just cut this off 
So this is the this is going to be our face plate, and we'll soften up the corners. We'll round those a little bit, and then we'll uh, put a bull nose around that, and uh, that'll look good. Put my switches on there. Got a little USB that we'll put in there, and I'll probably put a little reading light on top, and we'll call that good. We'll get that varnished up and looking nice. In the meantime, before we think about getting things insulated and uh, put top on, I needed to test all the electrical. So, let me show you what I did. So I temporarily put on some connectors here on each of the lights and uh, got those fastened on. I'll probably shorten them up on the inside because right now they're you know, pretty long. And got those sitting in there. I went ahead and stuck the lights in the ceiling and I think those look pretty good. Then on the front, hooked up my test battery, put my charger on there because the battery's kind of low. I've had these batteries for a long time. And I hooked my leads to my positive and negative running into the trailer. And uh, now time to test out the wiring and make sure that one, everything's connected correctly, and two, that they work. So the switches are illuminated and uh, they shouldn't be. I bought three of these and they're only supposed to illuminate when they come on. One of them works perfectly. These two do not. So I think they mixed up their set. They have a set that are always illuminated and a set that only illuminates when you turn them on. But I think I can live with that. Um, yeah, they were kind of spendy, about 40 bucks, so I'm not going to buy another set. Anyway, I've got uh, connectors all connected up here. Now let's give everything a test. Hello down there. Alright, so I've got the uh, camera pointed towards the ceiling, so <clears throat> we're going to test these lights out. And uh, these are touch switches, so <clears throat> we'll just touch that. Boom, there's one set. And boom, the other set. Looks pretty nice. They work. So all we have to do is just touch these things. And the lights come on. No sound, no nothing. And it lights it up in there really nice. I didn't know if, uh, if I would have enough lighting, but I think, uh, nope, I think that's enough lighting. And then we'll have one small reading lamp up here, and it'll point down this way, and it'll be a little bit dimmer. So that works pretty good. All right, just a real quick recap of everything that we did. First thing we did was installed our little bus bars, and I believe these are capable of 50 amps, so uh, no chance of those overheating with the little power that we're drawing. So I installed the bus bars and drilled a little hole in the back. I actually got two holes for my wiring to come in. And then we started here in the back, drilled a hole down and through, and this runs our wiring to our hatch. And then we started drilling holes in our spars, got our wiring laid out to each light. We made our little light rings, put those in place, cut out the uh, area for the lights, also cut out the area for the ceiling fan, and then we run the wiring down the front into the cabin, connected everything to the bus bars, and got our wiring coming out and it'll exit out of the trailer here on the front. Then to test our lights, we connected everything up, hooked up our switches, and gave it a good old test. Obviously, I don't have a fan to test the fans, but I did test the voltage, and the voltage for the ceiling fan, and the voltage for the hatch area, uh, currently with the battery plugged in and everything is 14 and a half volts. So 
I've got power everywhere. Everything is working fine. The lights have been on for a little while and they get a little warm if you leave them on for an extended period of time. So uh, I think that looks pretty good. It's going to work out fine. And we got our switches. We'll go ahead and cut everything off here. Perfect. Okay, I think that's going to do it for this video. So that's our wiring layout. That's how I run my wiring and uh, got it into the trailer. And things are tested out and working fine. So very basic, simple setup. And uh, it's going to work great. So I know that through this video I probably uh, repeated myself a million times. But as I go along, that helps me uh, think things through. Yeah, I'm basically talking to myself when I, when I repeat myself. So, uh, with that, uh, glad you just watched till the end. And if you haven't already, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification, and uh, don't miss the up and coming videos. So, next video, I believe, we're going to go ahead and start installing the insulation and uh, getting things buttoned up. Then we'll start putting on the top. I still have to buy the phylon for that and the glue. And uh, before you know it, we'll have the roof done. And then we'll have the back section left to do. And then some trim work. And yeah, probably looking at some new wheels and tires and fenders. And then we'll work on the trailer lighting and get all that stuff hooked up. So still a lot to do. Not very, you know, time consuming, but uh, we're almost to the end and I think I can have this thing ready before you know it and on the road. So, until next time, stay tuned.